Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Friday, November 15th, 2024. Congratulations, you made it through another work week. Today is National Raisin Brand Cereal Day. You like those two scoops of raisins or however that goes in that ad? Today's your day. Celebrate it today. Uh, Some notable holidays coming up this weekend. Um, Saturday is National Fast Food Day. I like fast food. It also is Button Day. And Sunday, the two holidays we celebrate Sunday just about go together. It's National Butter Day, and it's National Homemade Bread Day. Now, I wonder if they're going to make the butter, homemade butter, on Butter Day. Homemade butter, homemade bread, that would be good right there. (laughs) If you're reading in the Bible with us for this weekend, for today, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Luke, chapters 1 through 3, Saturday, chapters 4 and 5, and Sunday, chapters 6 through 8. And also Proverbs chapter 15 today, 16 Saturday, and 17 Sunday. And as we're going into the weekend, I thought maybe we'd share something about humor today. Because we all need a good laugh every now and then, right? Well, in Swindoll's ultimate book of illustrations and quotes, he said this, Three tests of good humor. Can you laugh at your own mistakes? Can you restrain when it isn't fitting? And can you enjoy it all alone? So there we go. Three things to think about when it comes to humor. And hopefully you'll find some humor um, as we go into the weekend. Um, Today we're going to continue talking about spiritual wisdom. And uh, we're talking about why we need it. And yesterday we were looking at some verses from from Second Timothy and seeing how Paul was warning Timothy that that perilous times was coming. He was telling him he needs to continue in, in what he has been taught because he knows who's taught him. And uh, today we're going to go and we're going to look at another reason why we need spiritual wisdom. And it's going to be in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 7. I'm going to read for you verses 15 through 20. These are the words of Jesus now. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Another reason we need spiritual wisdom is because false prophets are everywhere. If you don't believe me, take a look on social media. You'll see all kind of false false teachers on there, and um, but Jesus is telling us here in in Matthew chapter seven that we need the spiritual wisdom so that we can make sure that we don't fall victim to false teachers. Because you see, someone's going to get up there and they're going to look the part of a pastor, they're going to sound like a preacher, and many people is going to fall for them. And whatever words come out of their mouth. I said this yesterday. I've said it in the past. And I'm going to keep saying it in the future. If you're listening to a person. And they proclaim. God has given me a new revolution. A fresh word. A new idea. A fresh word from the Lord. Then you know you better start running. Because God gave us all the words we're going to get. And that's in, in the Bible. The 66 books of the Bible. And if they're preaching outside the Bible then that's that's a sure sign that that we need to stay away from them. But Jesus makes it clear here how to be able to tell the difference between a true teacher and a false teacher. He says in verse 16, you shall know them by their fruits. 
You should have known them by their fruits. You know an apple tree when you go up to an apple tree and you see apples growing on it. You're not going to see oranges growing on an apple tree. You're not going to see grapefruit growing on an apple tree. And you're not going to see apples growing on a grapefruit tree. No matter what science tries to say, no matter what garbage they try and feed down our throats, you know a tree by their fruit. And you can't change it around. He tells us here that a good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Likewise, a good pastor, a true teacher of the word, is going to bring forth good fruit. You see, I think he was saying that because he knew what was going to be coming up. And remember yesterday in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he said here in verse number 3, despisers of those that are good. We talked about that verse yesterday uh, from Isaiah that says about people that call good evil and evil good. We're living in that generation now. Um, verse number five, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. We live in a world today where people have a form of godliness, but they don't have the true godliness that, that, that comes from God. I've seen posts that, that I've seen posts on social media the past few days of churches that are are inviting the LGBTQ to come and to, to serve in their church because they want to love all of God's children. Friends, that's an abomination. That's false teachers right there. And we need to make sure that we don't fall victim to that. That's why Paul warned Timothy and warned us that perilous times are coming, that people's going to be without natural affection, that people's going to be despisers of those that are good and despisers of those that tell the truth, and that people are going to have a form of godliness. And now Jesus is telling us here to make sure that we beware of false prophets and we'll be able to tell a false prophet by the fruit that they're bearing, by the message that they're teaching. And then if we look here back in Matthew chapter 7, in verses 21 through 23, these are verses I've been talking a lot here lately of. But these are examples of those with good fruit and corrupt fruit. Jesus is saying here, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Friends, those are the good teachers. Those are the true prophets. Those are the true teachers. Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, these people that Jesus is talking about here, these are people that had a form of godliness. These are people that despised the good. He said, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done works? Many wonderful works. But Jesus said, I don't know you. I don't know you. These are corrupt trees. These are people that's not following the truth. These are people that's making a form of godliness. These are the people that we need to make sure we, we stay clear of and we have spiritual wisdom to be able to see them for who they are and what they are. But people have the blinders on and people are so focused on trying to appease everybody, trying not to offend anybody that they're not willing to tell the truth. And that's why we need to make sure we have the spiritual wisdom. We need to have spiritual wisdom because perilous times are coming and we need to be able to see their message for what it is. We need to have spiritual wisdom because false prophets and false teachers are out there everywhere. And the third part to the, to the message today is we need spiritual wisdom to guide us. We need spiritual wisdom to guide us. Psalm 119 verse 105 says this, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's word. That's why we need to get in there and study it. That's why each and every day that I do a broadcast, I, I put on there some verses for you to look at. And I want you to look at these verses and I want you to study these verses and allow these verses to guide you as you're, as you're, you're going through your life. God's word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto my path. Let's look over in the book of Joshua real quick. 
And then we'll be done for the, for today. Joshua chapter number one. Setting up the story here. Um, Joshua is about to lead Israel into the promised land to take possession of their promised land. Moses has just passed away. The Lord is meeting with Joshua. And look what, what, what God says to him here in verses six through eight of Joshua chapter number one. He says, be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give to them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Look at what God's telling, telling Joshua here. He's telling him to, to be strong. He has to divide this land as an inheritance to the people. They have to conquer that land. They have to take possession of that land. How is he going to do it? He says to verse 7, to be strong and courageous. Not to be strong and courageous to go and possess the land. Look what he says. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. It's going to take strength and it's going to take courage to follow the principles that's found in the Bible, to follow the commands of God that's found in the Bible, because that's contrary to what's going on in the world and the way the world wants to live. So it's going to take courage and it's going to take strength to do that. And God tells him not to turn to it from the right hand to the left. As a result of, of doing that, he says that thou may prosper whithersoever thou goest. Friends, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. We got to make sure we remain centered on the word of God. We got to make sure that we we meditate on the word of God. We got to make sure that we don't we don't forsake the word of God. He says again in verse number eight that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in the law. For then, as a result of doing that, then. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. All because you had the strength and the courage to stay true to the word of God in a world that, that for, has forsaken the word of God and has labeled it as bad, as evil. Friends, we need spiritual wisdom if we're going to survive in this world. We need spiritual wisdom if we're going to remain true to God. Ask God for this wisdom. Ask God to give you the strength and the courage to follow him. And then make sure, make sure that you remain in his word so that way you don't fall victim to false teachers and false doctrines. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Hey, Frank, you needed me to give you some numbers for your deadline today? Bob, yeah, I'm so glad you're here. Here, let me pull up the report. Okay, make it quick. I've only got about five minutes. Yeah, um, hold on. Let me check that. Oh, that's my boss's number. I'll call him later. Okay, I need the sales figures for the last quarter. Sure, they're... Oh, I'm sorry, that's my pager. Uh, oh, it's my boss again. Is your life busy, full of deadlines? Don't worry, I'll call him later. Go on. Should I come back? Cell phone. Uh... No, it's my boss. No, 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 go ahead. Sales for the last quarter were... You've got mail. Uh, hold on. Uh, oh, it's my boss. God told us in the Bible to be still and know that I am God. Putting Him first will put the rest of your day in perspective. Have you taken time today to be still, to be quiet before God? Frank. Oh, Mr. Johnson. Sorry I didn't return your calls. I've just been working on that deadline. I've been trying to tell you. I don't need that report until next week. Oh. Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com. 